Hello and welcome to my channel. So um, this is Sarah's Creative Solutions and I'm Sarah and this is the instructions video for Daisy Duck or Dicky Duck. So I've made this template so that it can be made into several ducks and the head can be attached in lots of different positions and the hats can be added or not. So it's up to you. So at the moment um, I've rolled out the clay to five millimetres thick or 0 0.5 centimetres thick and I've laid out the template that I've cut out and drawn round all the areas that need to be drawn out round with a blunt tool and now I'm scoring and slipping on the toes and the reason why I'm starting with the feet first is because these are the things that need to be the most firm um, because obviously the, all the weight of the sculpture is going to be in the feet so these need to be going leather hard first more than anything um, because that's where all your strength lies so I always do the feet first. So now moving on to the legs. Now it's important that this part is leather hard before you start attaching the upper leg so this is the fattest part of the duck's leg that would be attached to the body. So it's just to give it a bit of definition and a bit more of a realistic look. So I add a couple of lumps of clay on either side of the leg and blend it in as you can see. And then obviously because I've added more water and I've started blending in, you need to allow them to go firm before you start attaching them to the feet. So now I'm moving on to the neck of the duck. That's the lower neck. This is the upper neck. It's all written on the template for you to see. You just kind of curve it a little bit. And that's the lower duck beak, that's the upper duck beak. And do the same with those. And you can see how they would fit together. Okay, now this is the upper duck body. And that's the neck area. So basically just start rounding it out. Clay is very soft at this stage, so don't do too much. And then put that to one side. I've got some little clay props there that I've just sort of propped it up on so that the gravity will make the clay keep to the shape that you've put it in. Now that's the lower body and the upper body there. So as you can see, I'm just showing you the props. And on the lower body, I've cut out the um, darts of where you've got to slip together. And now I'm just doing the neck area. Keep blending it, take away the dots after it's firmed up a little, blend that area in on the outside, it doesn't really matter about the inside so much but I do blend that in as well. In that area there is the tail, and now I'm blending in on the inside. Always do it in a cupped hand so you can kind of keep that body shape curled. Now I'm bringing the neck together, just the very end there. And then pinch that together. You might want to support the join with a little bit of extra clay because that's the only area we're joining together. So there might be a little stress on that joint from the rest of the clay body. Now we are going to cut the end off this neck uh, because it's going to allow the air flow into the head. But here I'm adding a little bit of clay to the join on the inside. Use a tool to blend it from the inside if you can't get your finger in there. And then pop it back on its props, make sure it's not touching the board. And now I'm slipping together the join on the upper body. And this is the upper neck. Now we're going to blend this bit out once it's attached to the body anyway, but that just sort of gives you an indication of where the neck is. And then pop that back on its props too. So now this is the face and I've laid it out here so you can see which part goes where. So pay attention to this bit. So you curve the upper neck slightly so that the eyes fit in like that. And then the beak goes on there like that, see? 
but obviously because the pieces are quite thick you have to take away the inner edge as I'm doing here so it kind of angles the edge and do that all over the piece but be careful not to go all the way through we don't want to go through to the other edge you're only taking the inner edge away so you want to leave about a millimeter edge on the outside And then the same on the um, duck beak. Take the inner edge away to make the beak thinner, just round the edge where it's going to join. And it makes it easier to shape as well. As you can see there, I'm not going all the way to the edge, just the inner edge, not the outer. Now, as you can see there, I'm leaving a little peak at the end because that is what a duck's beak looks like. If you're having trouble with um, finding something to, or if you, your memory's not that great what ducks look like, always go on the internet and ask Google to show you images of ducks and that just gives you a visual for when you're doing these bits and what shape and position the duck, should, the duck beak should be in and things like that. So as you can see, they fit together quite nicely now. Now it's time to sort of shape them a little bit. So the upper beak always bends upwards. And then the, the nose area is quite proud and scoops in. So you can have a little bit of a play with this until you get the position right. Have a look down the nose or down the beak. Scoop up the front like I'm doing there. Just keep messing with it until you're happy with the shape and then leave that to firm up a little bit. And then go back to the neck. Now we're taking the inner edge of the eyes away so they can be slipped together with the neck, upper and lower. So taking the inside edge away on the other eye. And now this is the upper neck and you can see it fits a lot better now you've taken that inside edge out. And then we've got to join all these bits together with really thick slip, not watery, runny slip, thick slip. And then the same with the lower neck, take the inside edge away very carefully. There you go, I'm showing you there. I leave the paper on at this point and peel it off later. So I'm going to slip these two parts together now. It's a bit messy. There we go. Give it a good smooth out with a tool if you can't get your finger inside. And then attach the eyes. Just check to make sure it's the right position and things before you um, slip them in. There we are, it fits quite nice. And now for the other side, plenty of nice thick slip. There we go. And that's the right position now for the beak to be attached, look see. So now we're going to slip the beak together. Make sure you don't lose the shape. Because once you've affixed it onto the head, it's going to be difficult to amend it. So do all the sculpting and things that you can to make sure it's going to fit. There you go. See, it fits nice onto the bridge of the nose. Plenty of slip on both pieces. Don't forget to score. You could just use white vinegar if you want to, if you don't like scoring. There we go, see it's looking really good isn't it? So now obviously just got to let that firm up a little bit, blend in where you can and then later on I fill in all the gaps and blend with thick slip. So now I'm just marking out where the wing's shoulder would be. It's just with a, a, a drinks lid, which is a nice circle shape. 
And obviously this is where the wing meets the neck area. So we don't want to cut all the way through, but we are thinning out that area a little bit. And then take the inside edge out on that as well, because that's where that's going to blend onto the body. So this takes some of the work away of blending. And then the same with the edge of the wings, make them a little bit thinner so they're not as thick. Slice that away all the way around. It's quite satisfying actually, trimming. So then once, once you've got to the thickness that you like, then you've got to score all of the inside of that. Do the same with the tail on the lower body. Thin the edge of that out because that's where it's going to attach to the upper body. Smooth out any bits. And then score all around the edge because that's what's going to attach to the, to the upper body, but it's kind of overlap one another, you'll see in a minute. Plenty of slip again. Pop that back on its props and then do the same with the upper. Lots of scoring and plenty of slip. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And then there we go. Slip them together. Make sure it's in the right position before you start patting it down and things because obviously it will be more difficult to rectify if you've attached it and then go, oh, it's not quite in the right position. So now I'm just blending, blending, blending all around the tail area. You can see it's quite thick there at the end still, so obviously that's got to be taken away a little bit if you want it to look seamless, but you don't have to do that, but that's what I did. Now I'm onto the neck and I'm using a tool on the inside as you can see and trying to smooth around as much as I can and don't forget this has been slipped together and it's had time just to firm up a little bit because you wouldn't want to do this straight after you've slipped it together because it might just fall apart. It's going to give it time to dry out slightly. Okay so this is where I start peeling off the template. Obviously it's a bit messy and things and you might end up catching the clay slightly with your fingers but at this stage it doesn't matter because you're going to be adding a lot of slip to the outside anyway to fill in all the joins um, so that will all come off with um, the water anyway So this is where I'm adding the thick slip. Fill in as much as you possibly can. You don't want to see any holes or cracks or anywhere. It's a gradual process because the first layer of slip has to firm up slightly before you can add more because it will just come away with the brush. And you can define any areas like the edge of the beak, um, where the beak meets the head the nasal area, just start touching them up so that the slip doesn't bury them. It's easier to do it at this stage and when uh, you've attached it to the body because you can hold it in your hand. So I recommend you do this, the body and the head separately and only attach the head and the body once you've finished sculpting them and blending them. It actually took me two days to do this sculpture, not because I was up from the crack of dawn till midnight, but because there's a drying time in between. So now I'm going back to the feet. So while I've been doing all that, the feet have been going leather hard. As you can see, they're not floppy anymore. And that water I put on earlier has evaporated and it's firmed up again. So it's ready to stand up on its own without support. So we're just going to slip these onto the feet where I've already added the outer toes and we're just adding the middle toe now. So score and slip.
So press down firmly and then very back by the heel the clay is quite thick so blend that into the leg, the lower leg either side. We don't want to see a step there, we want it to blend in with the rest of the leg. And then the same with the back. Um, on the middle toe I sculpted in the toenails already so it gives me a line where I need to add to the outer toes which I'll show you in a minute but you can see I'm blending that in quite well so you can't see the join both sides Now if the clay, clay has gone a little bit firm, you can add a little bit of water at this stage and that allows you to uh, mould the clay with your fingers more. I'm just making a point to where the claw would be, drawing those bits of clay together and joining them up. It gets smoother and smoother. This has got grog in it as well, this clay, but it's still really good for sculpture. So now I'm marking out the claws, I'm using my sharp straight tool for this. I mean you could even use your fingernail if you've got any nails, as long as you don't go too deep. And then I start drawing on the wrinkles in the feet and things like that, but yet again if you would like to see a representation of duck's foot then just google duck feet images click on images and just have a look at quite a few of their feet and then you can make it a little bit different to mine if you don't think um, you want to make it a little bit more realistic you could you could make the toes a little bit thinner as long as you've got that base plate it should be fine you don't have to put the wrinkles on if you don't want to there's lots of things you could do differently to me
So I've done both feet now, I'm going back to the body and this is where I'm blending in the upper neck to the lower neck. You can see where it joins on there. So just keep feckling away with the tool until it's the desired smoothness that you will require. And also at this stage, keep checking the head against the neck that you've got there. Um, because you will need to adjust it slightly potentially. I have amended the template from when I made this so that the neck is shorter so you won't have to cut off as much as I did here because the neck is a little bit too long for my liking. Um, but it, you still may need to adjust it very slightly. So as you can see it's smoothed out quite nicely and you can't really see that join now. And that's where I chop the head off, but I do later on chop a little bit more off because I still think it needed to be a bit shorter. So like I say, I have amended the template, so you shouldn't have to chop off as much as me. Um, but it will still need a little bit of adjustment, possibly. So lots of blending, and I've left a hole at the very end, as you can see, because the head is hollow and the body's hollow, so we want that airflow. We don't want trapped air in the head because we want it to dry out inside as well as it does outside so we, it's not air pockets that cause uh, explosions it's trapped mo moisture and that's caused by something that hasn't had airflow so now I'm making the eyes these are my ceramic stamps that I've made to make the eyeballs and it gives me perfect little round eyes so what I do is I stamp them first take them out the stamp cut them out and then I stamp them again once they're on the sculpture and that just tidies them up on the sculpture, but then also seals them onto the sculpture because it squashes the, the edge of them on. And I've used the, these stamps now on about four of my sculptures and they've all worked out really well. And I've just bisque fired today and they've all worked out really well. So if they work, they're good. I recommend that you make some if you can. So now I'm um, slipping or filling in the area where the wings uh, meet the body and making sure it's really well attached. And I'm going to do that with a bit of soft clay rolled out into a sausage and then just kind of fill in and press down with a wooden stick so it doesn't stick to the clay as I do this. And it just gives me a nice finish. You don't have to do this, you can just leave it as it is and um, not bother filling in all this but this is how I've done mine so it's up to you if you go this far I'm blending and smoothing out now and don't forget every single time you add water to your sculpture even though it has started to go leather hard it will soften and there are areas where you will need to leave it for say half an hour in between each step. So even though this video is showing me speeding up there is times when I go off and make a drink and things like that and that gives the clay time to sort of um, settle and uh, fuse together where I've added slip and it's important that you do that otherwise you can stress the clay out. So here I am trimming that bulbous bit on the back and giving it a nice seamless finish. You don't have to do this, you could have left it the way it is and then just add your detail but I wanted to do that because um, I had a certain sculpture in mind when I made this so I, I'm tailoring it to what that sculpture looks like. And now I'm making the air hole at the bottom. And this is just so that the air can escape and also so that it will flow inside and out so that it dries out evenly. So now I'm smoothing out the head. You can see all the joins are filled in, it's looking good. And the feet, I've put on all the lines and wrinkles of duck feet. I'm just blending them a little bit. So obviously I've left them after spraying them now, probably a few hours, and I've come back and they're leather hard again, and it enables me to put more finer detail on and to blend a little bit more if they need tidying up, give it a smoother finish.
But if you're going to put detail all over your duck, you don't have to do these steps. So now I'm putting the feather pattern on where the neck meets the body. Now you've got an option to blend the neck to the body seamlessly without having to do this bit. This is just something that I decided to do because I thought um, it looked good and why cover a seam up when you can make it part of the sculpture. But you don't have to do this bit if you don't want to. Like I say, you could just blend it into the rest of the duck. So this is now the part where I'm going to attach the feet to the body. So I use really, really thick um, slip. Um, and I do that because it's part of the look. I wanted it to look like small feathers attaching uh, from the underside of the body to the top of the legs. And as you'll see in a minute, it looks quite good. You don't have to do that. You could smooth it out completely if you want to and just paint a pattern on or sculpt a pattern in of feathers if you wanted to. But this is what I decided to do. And at the front there, I've got a clay prop. That's just bone dry clay. It's not fired. And I sculpted that just before I decided I was going to do this sculpture. So to support it while it dries, so it can stand up on its own. You must always support sculptures as they're drying out. And don't take that prop away even when you think it's leather hard. Leave it until just before you're going to take and put it in the kiln. And then take the prop away. Um, and that just ensures that everything stays in one piece and you don't get any cracks. So this is where I'm showing you the positions of the head. You slip this on in any way you would like. And there you go, I put it in that position. That's finished, ready to go. It's drying out and going in the kiln soon. And uh, I've done a hat for it uh, with a daisy, because this is Daisy Duck. And I've also put a top hat in for Dicky Duck. So this is Dicky Duck and as you can see he's got a hat and then what I did later on was I added a plume of feathers on top of his head so that the hat would key into that.